Okay, this is going to be the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur Part 6 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And we're standing here at the site of the old William Bliss Farm, which you can see some monuments in the distance. This was the spot where the William Bliss Farm once stood. And in Part 5, we talked about the train by Watson's Battery passing the McMillan Farm, which you can see here in the distance, and then heading to this area across the fields of Pickett's Charge. This is the heart of the battlefield. And you can imagine a fully operational steam train coming through the sacred fields of the Gettysburg National Military Park, and especially sacred to Pickett's Charge. But that train runs across here by the property of the Bliss Farm on the ridge that you see there in the distance, and then headed straight up ahead, and in the distance you can see the roof of the reconstructed Corridori Barn. And the, how, the train, rather, would go just to the left side of that barn, which will pick up in Part 7. And at that point, it would cross not only the Emmitsburg Road, but the trolley tracks for the Gettysburg Electric Trolley. Now, of course, the William Bliss Farm was burned on July 3rd, 1863, by Union soldiers of the 14th Connecticut. Out of the three farms, the Emanuel Harmon Farm, the William Bliss Farm, and the Peter Trossel Farm, out of the three farms that were completely destroyed during the Battle of Gettysburg, this was the only one that was destroyed by Union troops. It was burned to prevent it uh, from being a Confederate sharpshooter's position. The house once stood right over here, and to its left, over there in the distance where you see the monuments and the old bank was one of the largest bank barns in Pennsylvania. And you'll want to go back and watch our video series called The William Bliss Farm for more about that farm, as well as the video called The Gettysburg Electric Trolley. This has been the Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. This is going to be the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur Part 7 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And in Parts 5 and 6, the train turned through and by the David McMillan Farm, the William Bliss Farm, across the fields of Pickett's Charge, where the deadly charge of July 3rd, 1863, pl took place, with the objection point being the angle and the copse of trees. The train tracks of that spur once crossed right to where we are standing right now. They crossed the Emmitsburg Road right here where you see my car once stood the tracks of the Gettysburg Electric Trolley, also giving tours of the Gettysburg Battlefield. If you remember on our video series, it hit a switch out by the 8th Ohio Monument and then headed southbound on the Emmitsburg Road. You want to go back and watch that video series. But right here where I'm standing is where the two lines crossed. And then the train of the Round Top Spur would head in this direction over here, crossing the Emmitsburg Road near the Corridori Farm. Now when it crossed the road here, uh, something strange happened. And I'm going to hop this fence and we're going to talk about uh, the route of this train track. When the train crossed the field, this is where it came into one of the closest contacts with a monument on the Gettysburg battlefield. The monument that you see here in the dis just in front of us, behind before you see the Pennsylvania Monument and the Vermont shaft, is the monument to Colonel George Ward of the 15th Massachusetts, who was mortally wounded where that monument sits. Now, the tracks of the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad, Round Top Stir, Spur, rather, came so close to this monument, and as we walk along what was the trolley path, um, that at one time, passengers in the train cars used to come by, and probably out of fun, hit this monument with canes or with their hands. To one point where they had to build a barbed wire cage around the monument to protect it from being vandalized. Uh, again, on July 2nd, 1863, Colonel George H. Ward, commanding the 15th Massachusetts, uh, was mortally wounded here 
in this spot. And this is a bronze depiction where here of Ward where he fell. The Gettysburg Electric Trolley would then proceed up into this area where you see the trees today. Um, and that's going to be where they had a station that we're going to talk about in Part 8. But this has been the Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur, Part 7, here at the George H. Ward Monument on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Okay, I am standing here on the old road of the Gettysburg. Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur, and this is going to be the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur Part 8 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And it was in this area that one time a railroad station once sat called Hancock Station. And this station was built specifically because just a few years later the Pennsylvania Monument would be dedicated. And many of the uh, people coming on this round top spur would get off at the station. And of course, veterans as well got off at the station when the monument was dedicated. Um, the train took a slight bend and headed toward the Pennsylvania Monument and then out toward Hancock Road. Now, one of the interesting things about this area is this monument that sits here, uh, which is the wounding spot of Major General Hancock. And if people watch the movie of Gettysburg, it appears that Hancock was wounded back by the coats of trees as he watched Pickett's trains come across the field. Um, today, the monument sits here in the area where Hancock actually was wounded. But this area doesn't look the way it did in 1863. As they dug the foundation for the Pennsylvania Memorial, they needed a place to put dirt, fill dirt, and they put it in this area because veterans of the 59th New York during the uh, 1913 war remembered being and fighting in this area and they said that it was a hollow in the ground where they took cover during the Battle of Gettysburg and now today they don't remember that in 1913 as the same ground. The ground is much higher, there's even a hill where the Hancock Monument sits. It was also remembered that way from Confederate veterans from Florida. But again, the railroad crossing by the Georgia Road Monument came in this direction by Hancock Station, then had a slight bend where it would head by the Pennsylvania Memorial and out toward Wyker Wyke Till. In our next two videos, we're going to look at where it crossed Hancock Road and then where it headed to Wyker Till before proceeding to the base of Little Round Top. This has been the Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur, Part 8. I do want to mention also that a newspaper article uh, on July 24, 1894 mentioned a local Gettysburg baseball team that had purchased this uh, parcel of land here because of the hollow. It had a natural uh, uh, ground fortification for a baseball field. And a baseball diamond once sat right here. Yes, a baseball field on the Gettysburg National Military Park once sat in the hollow in this area of this ground. So not only was the battlefield being disrupted by trolleys and trains, but also even a baseball field once was on the Gettysburg National Military Park. This has been the Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur, Part 8 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Okay, this is going to be the Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur, Part 9 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And I'm standing here on Hancock Avenue. Uh, next to me is Dow's 6 Main Battery under the command of Edwin Dow. And of course, across the street is the statue to Father William Corby, the Catholic priest that gave absolution to the soldiers at the Wheatfield on July 2nd of 1863. And this small little rise in the ground that you see here is actually the roadbed from the original Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur. Now the Round Top Spur, as we talked about in previous videos, came from the Corridor Farm, past the George Ward Monument, over to Hancock Station, and then it started headed down toward the Pennsylvania Memorial in this 
direction. And this is where it crossed Hancock Avenue, right in between Father William Corby's monument and Dow's sixth main battery, right here, and then proceeded in this direction toward Weicker Till, which we'll take a look at in our next video. You can still see a small indentation in the ground here today, or hump in the ground where the railroad tracks once stood. And actually in the winter time when it snows, you can see it even better. Now a little bit about this area, Dow's Battery uh, was under was part of McGilvery's Brigade of Reserve Artillery, and they were under the command of Edwin Dow. And it was this battery um, that ordered John Bigelow's 9th Massachusetts when there was a large hole in the Union Army on July 2nd in this area. They ordered Bigelow's battery to the Trossel Farm. And that battery had to be hit very hard by William Barksdale's Mississippi Brigade Charge, which came across the field in this direction, in which uh, General William Barksdale was mortally wounded. Um, Dow's battery uh, was positioned in this position right here, um, and they had four 12-pound Napoleons, 13 men were wounded, and they to partook in the artillery barrage of Pickett's Charge on July 3rd of 1863. And then of course across the street is Father William Corby, the Catholic priest, who delivered absolution, as he's depicted here, to the Irish Brigade soldiers on July 2nd, 1863, as they entered the wheat field. And you can imagine as this steam engine, uh, along with the guide that we talked about in Part 1A, uh, coming through Pickett's Charge by the, by the newly erected Pennsylvania Motor talking about the actions here on July 2nd and 3rd of 1863. This has been the Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur Part 9 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Okay, I am standing here on Weikert's Hill. The George Weikert Farm is here in the distance. The John T. Weikert Farm is further in the distance. And this small hill, what you see the castle of the New Jersey Brigade Monument, sits here on Weikert's Hill. And this is going to be the Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur Part 10 here at Weikert Hill. And we're going to talk a, bit, a little bit about the, uh, the railroad, but first I do want to point out that some of the least visited flank markers sit along this wall line here of Weikert Hill. And you can see one here tucked in right next to this tree. There's one just over on the stone wall. The first, second, third, 15th New Jersey was against this wall here defending this area during the Battle of Gettysburg. Now as we shift back to the actual Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad, um, in parts 8 at Hancock Station and then parts 9 at the Father William Corby and Dow's Battery, we talked about the train crisscrossing Hancock Avenue and headed in this direction. This is one of the spots on the battlefield where you can still see a very detailed rise in the ground where the train tracks once come. And then here in the distance, in the far distance, again you can see the Corridori Barn, you can see Dow's Battery over here to the left, and then just out of sight is the Father William Corby. The train tracks actually came right here where you see this rise in the ground. This is the remnant of the train roadbed. But one of the things we're going to talk about, and also a secret of the battlefield, that not many people know about. We showed you the rise in the ground. We showed you some of the railroad ties. But at one time, there were uh, directional informational signs that were placed by the Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad uh, for trains as they entered populated areas to blow their whistles as the bell was ringing. And they actually placed pieces of iron track in the ground to hold the signs up. 
And again, as the train would come from this direction, and right here where the rise is, it would pass by, these would be signs that would be here on the left-hand side where the engineer would sit, warning him that up ahead was a populated area and to start blowing the whistle. And that's exactly what would happen. As the train would pass by here, they would sound the whistle, they would notify uh, the population, and of course those in Round Top Park, um, that the train was coming and to let them know that. And this is one of the great secrets of the battlefield. This is one of the few remaining uh, markers placed here in 1884 by the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad. This has been the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur here on Weikert's Hill, Part 10 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Okay, we have come, we have come to the end of our tour on the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur. And this is going to be our final part, part 11. Now as the train would enter this area here, pulling its passenger cars, right here in front of us is the Wheatfield Road. Um, in the distance, believe it or not, on the slope of Little Round Top was once Round Top Park. It was an amusement area, amusement park on the slope of Round Top. And this train that would originate in cities like Harrisburg would end up at the Gettysburg Station, which we looked at in our first video, and then the spur line would come out here to the slope of Round Top, where it would meet up with the Gettysburg Electric Trolley, as we talked about in another video, um, and it would bring hundreds of visitors a day out here to the Round Top Park. The train in this area would hit a series of switches as it would go here, it would uncouple the cars, the engine would come up here, hit another switch, turn around, come back across the Wheatfield Road, pick up the cars on the switch, and then head back in the direction that we trace today, back up to the Harrisburg Railroad Station. They could also swap passengers between it and the Gettysburg Electric Trolley, which the tracks also came into this area. Um, today, where the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad round top spur uh, once crossed here at the Wheatfield Road is where this no relic hunting sign sits here on the Wheatfield Road. In the distance, this is the Tawny Town Road, and on the corner here is Corbin's Barbecue and Grill. And I do have a few photographs uh, that are taken from right around here looking back in this direction um, that were taken in the 1930s and you can actually see uh, where the relic hunting sign is the rise or the hump in the road that is where the train tracks once stood and I do have some photographs that I'll post taken from this position here where you can still see the railroad tracks and the remnants of the railroad tracks as they cross the Wheatfield Road. Again, this is the end of our tour on the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur, ending here at the slope of Little Round Top, which Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain and the 20th Maine on July 2nd, 1863, defended the side of the Round Top against the Confederate attack of July 2nd, 1863. And again, the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur uh, intruded the Gettysburg battlefield. The the uh, train, of course, like the electric trolley, though, was uh, able to operate longer, um, was disbanded in uh, 1932, and the tracks remained in the ground till 1942 until they were taken up and used for the World War II scrap drive. Um, again, this has been one of the two railroad intrusions on the Gettysburg National Military Park. I hope you all have enjoyed this video series uh, and this interesting, uh, not well-known fact about the Gettysburg National Military Park. This has been our series, the Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur, here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook.